Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all keeping well. My name's Liz and you know exactly what we do on this channel. So last week we took a break from the Norman period and I did a video on the history of Halloween and you and if you haven't seen that yet, I will link that up there or down there for you to go and find. But this week we are delving straight back into the Norman period with a video on Robert Curthose, who was the eldest son born to William the Conqueror. And if he is someone you're interested in, then please stay tuned. <laughs> Robert was born around 1054 and he was the first son born to William the Conqueror and Matilda of Flanders. And Robert was described as short and stocky with a charismatic voice and he was also a brilliant warrior. But Robert actually had a fractious relationship with his father and they didn't always agree on things. And William was known for making fun of Robert and he had gave Robert the nickname Kurt Hose, which meant short pants. So he was essentially making fun of his son's height. So it was no surprise really that Matilda, that Matilda, that Robert preferred the company of his mother Matilda, whilst William favoured the company of Robert's younger brothers, William Rufus and Henry. When Robert... Um, was around 10 he had been betrothed to uh, Margaret the heiress of the county of Maine and this had gave Robert the title of Count of Maine and Maine itself wasn't really a prime estate nor was it a very prestigious title the county was quite empty with only a few towns cities and people but Margaret died before they could marry and this had left Robert with a very weak hold on Maine. Robert would have been around 12 or 13 years old at the time of the Norman Conquest in 1066, and he would have been too young to fight. And it was known that he was actually disappointed that he couldn't take part. But on a more personal level for Robert, William was acknowledging his importance. Whilst his father was away fighting at the Battle of Hastings, Robert was put in place to support his mother Matilda, who had been left in charge of Normandy, and Robert was officially named heir to the Duchy of Normandy. After the conquest, William, who was now King William I of England, he and Robert appears to have been getting on a little bit more better as William had left Robert in charge of the Duchy of Normandy with lordship and governmental responsibilities as the heir. By the 1070s, Robert, who was in his 20s, he had wanted security from his father in lands and title in order to have a position in the realm and a source of revenue. Robert, who was the firstborn, he had wanted his homeland and his father's original and primary um, title. So Robert sought after what he thought was rightfully his. Now, Robert was actually quite a forceful character and he had quite a high sense of self-importance and he felt himself to be an equal with his father. But William had refused Robert's request, instead telling him, just be patient, your time will come. And for William, who was actually quite a foul-tempered man himself, it was actually quite a diplomatic response. But for Robert, with that high sense of self-importance, he took great offence to his father's refusal. Now, just like most families, the House of Normandy had their fair share of clashes of personalities and big disagreements. And just like many families, 
the jokes were often taken too far, you know, and the old saying ill end in tears. Now in 1078 in Normandy, tensions were rising high between Robert and his brothers. And it was said that when Robert was playing outside with his friends, his brothers had emptied a full chamber pot, which was a toilet, down onto Robert and his friends. And his brothers had supposedly done this because Robert was so prideful. Now for Robert, this was a serious insult to his honour and his friends. And he demanded that he wronged the right what they'd done to them, what he they done to him more. And this had turned out into an all out brawl and it could only be stopped by William himself intervening. Now, what made things worse for Robert was that his father failed to punish his brothers. So after the fight had stopped, or had been stopped, he did what any well-reasoned grown adult would do. He tried to start a rebellion as revenge against his father for his wounded pride and dignity. Now, Robert and his friends travelled to Rohan and he had tried to capture the castle. Now, the siege proved to be unsuccessful and Robert and his friends fled into exile before they could get arrested. Now, Robert seeks refuge from his uncle, Robert, the first Count of Flanders, and he occasionally sneaked onto his father's lands where he caused so much trouble, William had to join forces with the King of France to stop his own son. Now, William and Robert, they had clashed in battle in January 1079, and Robert had managed to knock his father down off his horse, and he beat his own father before he realised that he was actually beating his own father. Now William, who was so embarrassed by his own son, he fled. Now after the minor family dispute, Matilda had managed to bring her family back together. But the family peace had only lasted for a few years until Matilda's death in 1083, uh, which at that point Robert had left court and he became a wandering knight where he had many illegitimate children. Now during the short time that there was peace between father and son, Robert was trusted to raise at William's power in the north and to strengthen the defences, William had been caught out twice. The first was by the invasion by Malcolm III of Scotland in 1079, and the second being a rebellion of angry Englishmen who murdered the Bishop of Durham, who had been caught in the crossfire of a local feud in 1080. Now, Robert had actually proved to be very effective at his new found responsibility uh, with responsibility he had led an army north and they had crossed into scotland to confront malcolm the third who had been wise enough to actually talk to robert and they became friends and robert was named godfather to malcolm's daughter and this had effectively became a truce between England and Scotland and prevented Malcolm from acting against Robert and more importantly, William. After Robert had sorted out the issue with Malcolm III of Scotland, who was constantly invading Northumberland, Robert began his journey back south and he decided he wanted to stop off at a little 
um, placed on the north bank of the Tyne, likely to have been called um, Monkchester. But Robert had clearly liked the place as he decided to have a castle built on a hill overlooking the Tyne, which he which he just so absolutely named Newcastle, simply because it was just that. It was a new castle. And almost a thousand years later, the, the name stuck. In September 1087, William the Conqueror died. William had left Normandy to his eldest son, Robert, who had then become the Duke of Normandy. His younger brother, William Rufus, inherited England, becoming King William II. As for, um, as, for Henry, as for Henry, as for William's youngest son, Henry, he had just been given some money. Robert and William came up with the brilliant plan of making each other their heirs because that's worked so well in the past. But this agreement only lasted a year um, when Robert had decided that he actually wanted to be King of England and he went to war with his brother. Now, Robert was supported by the barons, but Robert never showed up to support the barons. So the rebellion simply faded away. Now this had kept Robert's hands clean, essentially, of the whole process. Now there's very little known about Robert's time as the Duke of Normandy, but in 1096, he had wished to join the First Crusade. And because he was flat broke, he mortgaged the Duchy of Normandy to his brother, King William II. So Robert built an army and he joined the crusade. Now, Robert had proved to be a great participant in a very successful campaign. And the crusade suffered major problems there was a lot of destruction and many, many deaths on both sides. But Robert had been one of the key leaders in the campaign that conquered Jerusalem. Robert had proven himself to be a very good military leader. He was a good fighter and he was also a good leader of men. And on the completion of the not so peaceful pilgrimage, Robert and the other crusaders were all cleared of their sins. But unfortunately for Robert, the war, the temptation of power was just too great for Robert and he couldn't he couldn't be saved from himself. While Robert was fighting in the East, his youngest brother, Henry, had inherited the English throne after William, uh, William Rufus' sudden death. When it was heard, when Robert heard of this, to say that Robert was just a little bit peeved might be too polite. When he returned to Normandy, he claimed the throne for himself on the agreement that he had made with William Rufus to be each other's heirs. Now, Robert, who was starting to show similarities to his late father, Robert set sail for England. But for sadly for Robert, he just wasn't quite no conqueror. He had made way too many critical mistakes in the invasion plans. And when he arrived in England, what he found was a country that was united 
under his youngest brother Henry, who was now King Henry the First. So no one cared about Robert's claim to the English throne, but Robert, being the pig-headed man he was, he refused to relent even after he agreed with Henry that he would. The English throne was the least of Robert's problems. He was deeply unpopular in Normandy for his lack of political leadership and his not so pleasant personality. It was said that Robert had missed the Easter sermons, the one of the most important in the church calendar and his presence was to be expected. But all because Robert was just a tad hungover, he didn't go. Henry, this was the last straw. So he launched an invasion of Normandy in 1106 and he beat Robert at the Battle of Tichenbury and he took Normandy for himself and he took his older brother Robert as prisoner. Robert was first locked up in, excuse my pronunciation, Defices? Devices castle and he was there for about 20 years. Robert was then moved to Cardiff castle where he would spend the next 28 years until his death in the um, in his early 80s. Robert died on the 3rd of February in 1134. He was buried in the Abbey Church of St Peter in Gloucester. His effigy was carved in bog oak lies in a mortuary chest decorated with the attribute arms of the nine worthies. The effigy dates about a hundred years after Robert's death and the chest was much later and the church, St Peter's, became Gloucester Cathedral. Now Robert's youngest brother Henry I would die only a year later in 1135. Henry, whose one legitimate heir, died on the white ship and with no further brothers, England descended into the period known as the Anarchy. And there we are. There's Robert's story. There he is. Was he a chip off the old block or do you think he was a little bit worse? What's your opinion on Robert Kurthose? I'd like to know. And as I end that, the anarchy, we are heading very fast into the anarchy and I have so many future videos planned. So if you make sure you don't miss any, please do like and subscribe so you don't miss any of those future videos. And thank you so, so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And look after yourselves. I'll see you all soon. Oh, just before I do go, there won't be a video next week. I am taking a little break away. It's mine and my husband's wedding anniversary. So we are going for a little break away to York. But there will be videos after that. So look after yourselves and I'll see you in two weeks time. Be good.